If I have DACA, can I get a green card through marriage? I'm married to a resident or a citizen and I have DACA. What benefits, what advantages do I have? In this video, we're going to discuss this. So keep on watching to the end to hear about the advanced parole process for me and my wife. So I know a common question I mean that a lot of people ask and want to know more about is what are the benefits of having DACA and being married to someone that's a resident, a legal permanent resident of the US or a citizen of the US? And more importantly, can I get a green card through this marriage? And the short answer is yes. The process isn't as simple as just, you know, a short answer. There are still other things that need to be taken into consideration, of course, and I'll talk about it more. But being married to someone that's a citizen or a legal permanent resident, it opens the doors. If you're married to a resident or a citizen, you can submit a family petition. So for example, let's just say it's a citizen, right? The citizen spouse would petition for the person that has DACA. You, usually it's about two to three steps depending upon what process it is if you're learning something from this video please let me know by hitting that like button don't forget to subscribe it really helps this channel out to show it to people who need to hear this information thank you very much thank you the two big categories for family petitions is one here in the u.s two in the country that you were born now what distinguishes whether you can continue your application in the u.s or whether you have to leave the u.s and go back to the country of birth now this this is important the thing that distinguishes it is how did you last enter the u.s if you entered undocumented documented you know you were brought as a kid through the border you were snuck in the trunk of a car basically you did not enter as you did not enter legally you did not have a lawful admission how it's considered under immigration law to get a green card through marriage you would generally have to leave the u.s and go back to your country of birth in comparison this is one of the big reasons why advanced parole is so big why it's so important if you get advanced parole and you're married to a citizen or a resident, that advanced parole can be used as a lawful entry. And now that you have a lawful entry, you are able to adjust status in the US. There's other ways to get a lawful admission, let's say for people that were brought in as kids on a tourist visa. For those people, they would also have a lawful admission and generally they'd be able to use that even though they've never left, uh, you know, they overstayed. It wouldn't matter if they're married to a citizen. If they're married to a resident, it's, it's a little different. But just the, the big thing to keep in mind is, do you have a lawful entry or not? The last time did you enter, was it lawful or was it not? That's the big takeaway that distinguishes whether you would be able to continue your application in the US or whether you would have to go back to your country of birth. And there's a few other things that you have to keep in mind. So having having a spouse that's a resident or a citizen it opens the doors you know many people here are undocumented they don't have a door open for them this is one great advantage the next thing that you would have to keep in mind is do you have any negative factors that affect your case i mean common ones are you know if you have a criminal record if you have unlawful presence if you entered and uh, you're here undocumented if you ever misrepresented something there's a lot of different areas that a lot of different things that can make you inadmissible make you ineligible make it so that although you have a door open because of your spouse you're not able to walk through if you have these things that negatively affect your case there's so many areas within immigration law of things that make you inadmissible i mean you've seen it in the stories you've seen it in the news i mean there's people that exit the us with daca thinking everything's okay but then they try to come back and it turns out they previously had an order of deportation they're permanently barred you know things like this unless you really know about immigration law you're not gonna know for most people i mean this isn't gonna be the case i'd say for most people they likely just came to the us as kids they've never left they were never stopped at the border with their parents at all they just came they've and they've never left for a lot of these people the case is going to be a bit cleaner. I mean, there's still a whole bunch of other factors that need to be considered, but generally it's gonna be a lot cleaner. So just a little bit about my wife and I's case with advanced parole and how that's going. So recently in early 2021, this year, we submitted the application for advanced parole. Thankfully it was approved because of a family member's uh, critical medical condition. 
Once it got approved, she exited the US and came back in. And then within about two days, we submitted the adjustment of status application so that she can continue her case here in the US because that advanced parole, that entry with the advanced parole can be used to adjust status in the US. Thankfully in her case, you know, she has no criminal record. She went to school, she's done everything right. So there is no negative factor there. And because of that, she is able to adjust status. We are now waiting on the interview. Uh, you know, hopefully there, there won't even be an interview. It'll just be the letter in the mail, but we're waiting for that. And just, it's just taking the processing times. But I have a video where I discuss this process, the advanced parole process for me and my wife in another video up here. If you want to learn more about that, feel free to watch that video. Thank you.